Hey Practice Biopsy, uh, this is D'Angelo here with another awesome webinar for you guys. Uh, today I am interviewing, um, we got Tyler here, and he is with Haven Dental, the owner of Haven Dental, which is, uh, Tyler, that's in South Lake, Texas, right? Yeah. Cool. So yeah. this is Dr. Dr. Tyler Brady, and uh, you guys know from following me in the group that I pretty much built my dental practice patient base using social media, using Facebook. Well, um, Tyler here, he built his practice patient base mostly using Instagram, which is kind of on the other side of things here. So um, today we're just going to sit down and talk with uh, Dr. Tyler Brady, and we're going to learn a little bit about his approach to that, his experience with that, and really get into it. So Tyler, I just, you know, of course, checked your, your Instagram page, but for anyone watching, it's uh, haven.dental. Is that the... Yeah, that's it. That's it? Cool. Yeah. Uh, 11,500 followers. Um, and I, I looked at the Google reviews. Uh, Tyler's practice has 233 Google reviews with a five-star average. So he's doing something right mm -hmm. with the technology marketing. Um, so Tyler, why don't you just like give us a little intro. Uh, tell us like how old your practice is, um, yeah. what your journey was like to building up your patient base, and how you ended up uh, having Instagram as one of your your primary marketing tools. Okay, cool. So um, we opened in February of 2018. Um, so we're almost three years old. Uh, it was in a competitive area. So I had to do everything I could think of, or at least try everything I could think of to get people coming in the door. Um, so I started wasting a whole bunch of money doing, at least in my opinion, wasting a whole bunch of money on conventional marketing mm -hmm. flyers and mailers and all that. Um, I, I got good deals on it and everything and it was done well, but I just didn't see the ROI that I was wanting from it. It was the average ROI, but it was just not my thing. The, the average, the average ROI with traditional marketing, I feel like for a startup, it's going to take you five years to grow your, your yeah, patient base. It's, it's terrible. You can't it do it. It takes forever. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we got a few patients off of it, but it was just so slow. Mm -hmm. So then, um, I was on Facebook one day, I mean, like, like a lot of us mm -hmm. and, uh, somebody had tagged me in, in a Facebook group that was like a local neighborhood group and was asking a question about teeth whitening or something like that. And so I got on and answered it for him. Um, and then I saw people were commenting like, Oh, if a dentist is going to put this amount of time into answering questions, I'm that's the dentist I want to go to to take care of my teeth. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So I started kind of participating more on these local Facebook groups. I actually got in some mom's groups, which was super helpful. Um, and just being active on there, answering questions, not trying to get people in the door, but just being a helpful local dentist was really helpful to start. Um, and then I had... It was about probably six months into my practice. I had a uh, influencer contact me who was a retiring Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. And she said, hey, I have this implant placed when I was, I don't think she used the word placed, but <laughs> <laughs> I had this implant put in when I was a cheerleader, but now I don't have that same benefit. Um, would you be interested in doing a trade or or something like that. So I said, yeah, sure. And I was super excited. I was just getting somebody coming in. Mm -hmm. So um, she came in, we chatted for a little bit and she's like, yeah, I can post up this many times and do this and do that. If, if you can help me and get that crown on the implant. And so I felt like it was a win-win for both of us. Yeah. Um, a lot of exposure. Like this is the place yeah, where the Dallas yeah. so Cowboys like cheerleader she, goes. We had like 40,000 followers at the time, which mm -hmm. was pretty cool. So, um, that started and then I just started kind of thinking like okay because at the time I was running Facebook ads I mean I was and they were working really well I had a lot of views a lot of participation and was getting good patients and so I didn't feel like um, that needed to change so much and then I just started thinking like I mean you're maybe a little like me where I'm a little ADD with things and like okay now what, now what can what, I do to make next? this better what's what's, what, this is great but what's better um, and so I started reaching out to local influencers and 
I mean, at the time I probably had like three or 400 followers. It wasn't like this large account that I had running. And I just said, Hey, love your account. I'd love to treat you to a free cleaning. Let me know if you're interested. That was it. That's literally word for word. Um, and a lot of them would respond because the funny thing Instagram? about, yeah. Okay. So the funny thing about Instagram is a lot of people like that's their job. That's what they do. And so there aren't a lot of benefits that come with being an Instagram influencer, like health benefits, medical, dental, all that. So a lot of them were like, Oh my gosh, I, I need to get my teeth cleaned for like two years. I'm so glad. And the nice thing too, is there's kind of this unwritten rule of like, if somebody gives you something over Instagram, then you post about it and you share about it. So you really don't even have to ask them to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, especially for like a cleaning or teeth whitening or something that's really kind of low budget low, for us. Yeah. Low it's area, it's low cost. pretty low risk. Yeah. So um, I think every single one of them posted without me even asking. Nice, dude. Then, I mean, things kind of evolved a little bit. It turned into a little bit bigger project to where we're kind of doing Invisalign things now. We're doing veneers. Um stuff like that. I have a couple influencers with over a million followers that have come in mm -hmm. and it's been really, really great. So you've been able to basically like just leverage social proof really well with local influencers in the community. Exactly. So did, was, was there, yeah, go ahead. Keep going. I was just going to say, so I kind of turned my marketing budget into my lab fees. So I count my six hundred dollars that i did in veneer lab fees as a marketing i mean i don't categorize it that way yeah. i still do it as marketing but, but that's mentally, the way you think about I, it because yeah i mean i i kind of scrolled through your your instagram page um a lot of cosmetic cases like even in your, your little bio it's like certified cosmetic dentist implantologist free veneer case for every thousand followers like heavy heavily visually focused marketing like stuff yeah, that's got to sure. look great yeah, and that's been a challenge too, getting good pictures. I mean, developing my technique. I mean, there's a lot of clinical things there and it's still not perfect, but we're getting there and it's it's helped me grow as a dentist too, being able to do all this work. Do you have like a special camera that you use or are you using your cell phone? <laughs> I do have a special camera <laughs> that I don't use. Okay. I use my cell phone. You use your cell phone. <laughs> you have the special camera and you don't use it, you use the phone. Yeah, it's just so much easier to just whip the phone out and snap it, and it's right there on Instagram. And, I mean, I have a really nice Sony mirrorless camera that I've got tucked in the back, and I haven't used it in months. Yeah. Um, I probably should, but it's just, like, so much easier to use a phone. I mean, because I mean, then, like, if, if you've got a patient, like, in the chair and you want to take your picture, you then hold up, let me go in the back and yeah. set up my big camera. Yeah, exactly. You just like, pull out your phone. Like, the battery's dead. I gotta switch that out. Or it's like, <laughs> you know, like on me all the time. So yeah, maybe I'll change that. <laughs> so like, how much? How much time would you say? Like, just in, in, typically, do you sp even do you spend on Instagram? Like, are you on Instagram all the time? Um, yeah. So originally, I mean, originally it was a lot of time. It was a part-time job for sure. It drove my wife crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, you're reaching out to people, answering questions, trying to think of new ways to post things. Um, yeah, now so with your, it's, like with your time, delineation of time on Instagram, it's not just you like posting things on Instagram. Your time is actually spent like sending DMs to influencers and trying to like build a network that way. Yeah, that and just being, I mean, the secret of social media is being active on it. I mean, you don't even, there's accounts that don't even have that great of content and they're just super happy and super nice and bubbly and they compliment other people on there and you kind of develop your own community. So that's, that's the hard part of growing your account is you've got, you just have to be on there participating. Yeah, and on there participating. I think that's something that like a lot of dentists need to hear if they're going to do this. Like it doesn't yeah. mean that you're on there, like just posting your cases or posting things from the office. Like be on there and engaging means like you're commenting on people's stuff. Like you're clicking like on their photos, you're chiming in, you're answering questions, you're throwing your two cents in, you're sending these people messages and trying to build relationships with them. Yeah. 
and I probably haven't sent a DM in six to nine months. Yeah. And that's because cause now, now you're, you're rolling. Now I'm rolling. Yeah. So where I have people reaching out to me and we've actually had to kind of create, I mean, we had a budget, but now it's like, okay, we can only do one of these a month or two of these a month yeah. or this many dollars a month. Tell me about that. Tell me about like the evolution of your budget. Um, so it's kind of the budget itself has kind of stayed the same. Um, now I'm getting more like bloggers that that want Invisalign. I don't know why. It's just it's huge <laughs> bloggers that want Invisalign, and so we've kind of had to limit them. Like, okay, well, we usually do one of these a month. We say, and we're booked out for the next six months, so we can get you in in like April. And they're like, okay, let me know. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited, and then. We're, we're also developing it too to where earlier I was talking about, sorry, my cat's out here, um, how um, it was just kind of this on your honor type thing where it's like, oh, they know if they're getting a free cleaning, then they should be posting up. I mean, when you're dealing with Invisalign fees, obviously it's a little more skin in the game. So we've developed kind of a, a contract to where they they propose what they're willing to do and then we kind of propose what we're willing to do and sometimes it's just it doesn't work out yeah. or sometimes it's like okay well i can give you 50 percent off if you want to do that mm-hmm. so there's some negotiating there which is kind of nice too because you don't have to just give it away you can at least cover your cost mm-hmm. plus some or things like that um but we usually try to do uh i'd probably say I mean, my cost wise, I probably try to limit it to about two or three thousand a month. Mm-hmm. Which and so when you talk, your, Tyler, when you're talking your, budget, yeah. like, is your budget? Are you saying that that's like the budget of free work you're willing to give away for that month, or is it a budget of like ads? Are you paying for ads on Instagram? I stopped paying for ads when COVID hit. I turned off my Google. I turned off Facebook ads. I turned off Instagram ads just because I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. I wasn't sure how long we would be closed for. Um, and I just kept being active on there and I haven't turned it on since. But So prior to COVID, you did run paid ads. Post COVID, yeah, you think, don't run paid ads. Yeah, I think I was paying 800 a month. Okay. So it was a it was a good budget. Okay. So when uh so I understand like the influencers, like they come in, they share the photos of everything, and they talk good about you. That's like one source of promotion. When you yeah. did the paid Instagram ads, what did those look like? Like what did what's your quintessential paid Instagram ad look like, even though you don't do them anymore? Yeah, so I had one it was a video of a girl seeing her veneers for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a 20 second video if that mm-hmm. and I think I had almost 200,000 views on that by the time I shut it off Nice. and I was pumping some good money into it because it was working I mean when working. you find one that works you put more into it for sure um, and it was just a find out more that was a link to my website um, yeah. some of them would do the website mm-hmm. yeah and and then I, I have like the very first page is like a schedule now button with a bunch of smiles on it. So it was a good landing page for that to be able to get people in. Um, so yeah, that was kind of it. She was just going, oh my gosh, they look so good. And it was just like a... Went from there. A smile reveal, I guess. Nice. How's your practice hmm. been doing overall since uh, since post-COVID? I mean, with at least uh, with marketing sounds pretty good. Yeah, so... I, I haven't, I'm in Texas, so we shut down for about six weeks in April and May. Yeah. Um, we opened back fully. I waited a little longer. I think we opened back fully in June. Mm-hmm. Um, and then June was our best month. And then July was our best month. And then August was our best month. And Same October, year. October's been insane. We did $300,000 in October. It's crazy. Which is like... You've got an associate now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she actually got COVID two weeks after I hired her. <laughs> okay. I know this is not on Instagram, but when she got COVID, how did you and your office handle that? We were just like, what? No, you, 
No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You're fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So she she actually had pre COVID. She has really bad asthma, and so she was really worried about it. And so she she took three weeks off. She went and got tested a few times. She actually had to go to the hospital and get some infusions of IgG, which was kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I got a good vacation, and then she came back, or and she left and I picked up her schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, so she was gone almost all of September or half of September and then a week in October. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was kind of hard making that decision. I mean, you would think it's like, Oh, well, yeah, take time off. But then as a business owner, you're like, Oh crap. Yeah. What are we going to do? How are we going to make this work? Um, and it was the same way when they told dentists too, like when the dentists take time off, I mean, sometimes that can correlate to kind of a forced time off for your staff too, you know? Yeah. Luckily we didn't have to do that because she was still pretty fresh and we were all kind of adapting and figuring out Mm -hmm. what we were going to do. We're trying to hire more assistants and, and things like that. So it kind of worked out nice that way where we didn't have to, you you hadn't like fully integrated her yet. Yeah. If there's time to get COVID, that was it. <laughs> yeah. And then she comes back and we basically start all over. She's like, yeah. okay, where are the birds? Where's the hand pieces? Yeah. Like, this. But she's rolling now. It's really nice. Good. Well, good. Uh, do, you, do you do any other formal marketing now other than your Instagram stuff? Or is that all you're doing? I, I do. Our high school here is, um, it's a really famous high school for football in mm-hmm. Texas. Um, they're constantly ranked top 10 in the state for football and a bunch of other sports. So that's a big deal. So I actually sponsor the stadium that's Mm -hmm. bigger than the stadium where I went to college. (laughs) That's, um, so we have some stuff up there and we participate with that, but that's about it. We don't do. Yeah. So really just Instagram and then like some community involvement stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's me. Like I do just Facebook and then, you know, some community involvement stuff here and there, which I'm doing way less of now because you can't go into the community. You just don't have time. Yeah. It was just not the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and I used to do stuff like I'd volunteer at the schools and stuff, but the schools are like not even really open anymore. Which yeah. Is it's, it's different. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you're, when you're making an Instagram post, Mm-hmm. Like what's going through your head when you're deciding what to post when you say like, oh yeah, this is going to be a good one to post versus, you know what, like maybe we'll post this one, but really it's, it's not that good. Like when you're about to click post, how have you decided like, this is a good one to post? What what are you thinking? What's your thought process? A lot of times, I mean, now it's kind of become a reflex. That's the thing about social media is at first it's really hard to get those posts rolling and you're like, okay okay, it's Tuesday, so I should do like a before and after or I should post uh, about so-and-so's birthday or something like that. And you have to like plan it out in your head. And then eventually you get to where you're just taking pictures of stuff mm-hmm. and you've got it on your phone. I actually just got the new iPhone because I need more memory on my phone to keep all the pictures of all stuff, stuff that I have. So eventually you just get an eye for it and you just it's a reflex. It's like, okay, take a picture of that. I'll make a little boomerang, make a video. And now I need to kind of retrain myself because I want to start doing that on TikTok. Um, Cause I feel like I that's know. kind of <laughs> up and coming and I freaking hate it. Cause it's like I got a <laughs> new one all over again. Um, but it gets a lot easier. Like that, that first getting things rolling, it's like moving a mountain. But now, I mean, I have the content on my phone the the captions that work are i think the posts that work the best are ones that create emotion and you learn that i mean we know that about marketing um we did so one of my patients um came to me and wanted to know if we could help out her mom and it was just like one of those things where i just couldn't say no Mm -hmm. so um so we had her mom in the chair and the patient was taking a video of me telling her we're going to do her smile makeover for free. And she was like, Oh my gosh, no way. And so that obviously got a lot of views and, and likes and stuff. Um, and then caption wise, just being honest and saying like, 
this was a fun case, kind of telling them why you liked it or why it was interesting or something about the person or how you were feeling when you were working on the person. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything that has like emotional value to it that makes you a person instead of a doctor really is always good marketing where you're putting that human aspect in. I like that. Um, with that said, like with emotions, like there's good emotions, there's bad emotions. Did you ever, do you ever encounter like you post something and then someone posts like a really negative comment or like a mean, nasty comment about you or the office and like, how often does that happen? And when it does, do you respond or do you kind of ignore it and just drown it with positive stuff? So I try to respond. Um, it doesn't usually happen. There was one time I was doing a giveaway and it was actually another office, which big no, no. Um, it was one of the staff members. She commented, tagged your friend in it and was like, if any office is giving things away, then you know their stuff is trash. And I was, I got, I got on there and was like, I mean, I know the value of my work and I know the value that it brings to people. And I'm just trying to do what I can to help somebody who wouldn't be able to have this otherwise. And she DM'd me and like apologized and some stuff and removed her comment. But it was just like, dude. Yeah. Like, like I imagine like, like this, this is something like I worry about. Here like in the back of my head tell me how you would handle this okay so let's say that yeah. like you post this before and after case um or you post like the revealing smile and the person's like super happy and then someone yeah. comments like about that person like i don't think she looks that good like yeah. how would you chime in on that something like that i'd probably just delete the comment yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people are just trolls. And, and you know, at that point, like, you're thinking about, like, the integrity of that patient, like, who you posted yeah. the after picture of. You know, like, you don't want them to see it and, like, feel bad. Yeah, exactly. Like, you've got to protect your patients, too. Like, you don't want to put, I mean, just because you're putting yourself out there doesn't mean you need to put them out there, too. Yeah. And, I mean, we do have a social media release. We have a read new patient sign it when they come into the office. I always ask permission if I can take and share their photos. Uh, even with that consent, I like to get like a verbal okay before we post anything. Um, but yeah, you've got to protect them and like they're trusting you to do good work and to help them feel good. So you've got to do that kind of as much as you can. So yeah, I would totally delete the comment and maybe like DM the person like, dude, shut up. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but a little nicer. You'd say it with your with your professional tact. You'd tell them. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is like? What's your? I know you do like a lot of cosmetic work. Mm -hmm. What is your typical patient profile? Like your typical patient who's coming in. You're like, okay, this is my ideal patient. Is it like? 28 year old girl looking for a perfect smile is it like you know who is it yeah it's probably around that and that's kind of what i envisioned when i started i said okay i knew i wanted to do a lot of veneers i know there are guys that do veneers but it's mostly like younger women mm -hmm. um and so I just, and, and then a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader showed up <laughs> and then the so, door opened. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. So you do have to have a target market in mind for sure. You can't be like showing a bunch of dangers and wanting to do cosmetic work. For sure. It just doesn't work. Yeah. So that, you've got to kind of cater to your market that you want coming in. I think that's a huge part of it because like you understand your market very well, like cosmetic stuff and you're skewing younger, like the 28 year old, the 31 year old who wants like this perfect smile. And that's part and, of the and reason when I, you look at Instagram, I went Instagram. When you look at like the, the average user on Instagram skews younger still in terms of social mm -hmm. media. So your Instagram is going to skew, you know, early 20s to like late 30s, whereas yeah. Facebook is going to skew from like 30, like mid 30s to like sometimes mid 50s. Like it's going to skew higher yeah. in the age yeah. of the users. So for what you're doing, I mean, that's, I think, a part of your huge success with it is that your target audience for the patient you want is on Instagram. Yeah. You know, they're not on Facebook That's as much. Why I headed that direction was because for sure. Like, okay. Being a pattern and 
And honestly, I would say to any orthodontist, if you're not on TikTok, you need to be on TikTok. For sure. That caters to so the easy. Kids. Free money. Just, <laughs> no, it really is. And if if you're doing any ortho at all, you should be on TikTok. What do you say to like the dentist who doesn't want to learn how to use TikTok or Instagram or Facebook? Go find somebody who just graduated high school, wants a job, and is constantly on their phone and say, you're my social media person. You pay them like, I don't know, around here it'd be like 12, 15 bucks an hour and you just have them do it for you. They know what works. They know what looks good. I think I haven't done that yet, but I'm getting close to just having somebody do that because just they know how it works. Poke around the office with their camera. <laughs> yeah, for real. Catching moments. And, yeah, exactly. And it's a reflex for them. I mean, we were we were out with my brother-in-law last night. We went and got gelato, and there's this like Christmas present thing lit up, and there's so many high schoolers taking selfies by the thing. It's like they can spot it a mile away like oh this is gonna post well so they have an eye for it it's it's kind of silly but it's kind of great too they it's just a different way of looking at the world which i think is pretty neat um, they also are doing those dumb tiktok dances yeah, too. Doing it. <laughs> all right i think that's a great answer to kind of wrap this up with i like to keep these around 30 minutes each and we're coming up yeah. right on 30 minutes Tyler, I appreciate you taking time um, out of your Sunday morning. I know you've got some yeah, family time to, to, to get to. I So do I. So I just want to thank you. And I'm sure uh, anyone who has any questions um, for Tyler, I'm going to have this video posted uh, in the Facebook group, also on practicebiopsy.com, uh, also on YouTube. So any questions for Tyler, post them. Uh, and on YouTube, whenever I post it on YouTube, it's in like the private unlisted channel. Um, so yeah, any questions, post them below. I'm sure we'll get some good dialogue going. All right, thanks for your time, man. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.